What's the deal? Oh, it's pointed so far down. Am I even in that spray? Look at stretchy boy. Oh, these are frog dogs. Mmm, you're so, so dry. Oh, wee. Hello. How is everyone doing? I feel like it's been a hot second since we just chilled out. You know, oh, fudge. I'm wearing jeans under this and it just feels like it's not the chill out fit of choice. But it is what it is. So we're just gonna embrace it and like roll with it. Um, I just got home from doing the podcast with my friend Ryland Adams. I don't know if you've heard of him. Do you saline rinse for my allergies? Just us allergy girls, we know. Oh my god. I said to the grass of angle. Oh. Is that just going straight through you? Uh-huh. Ew. Okay, this is the gross part. <laughs> this is TMI for YouTube. I was feeling like it's been a minute since we really just like were together chilling on a couch. So I posted an ask me anything and I'm gonna answer some of your questions. It takes me a second to figure out how to find the questions, but I'm sure I can do it. Done. All right, so I'm just gonna dive in. When did you know enough was enough with alcohol? I'm currently struggling with this awful addiction. I knew enough was enough with alcohol a long time before I actually quit drinking alcohol. I knew enough was enough when I could not stick to a limit that I would set for myself to drink when I would be going out with friends. And no matter what, once I started drinking, I couldn't stop drinking. I would always black out, throw up, you know, just, there was never enough alcohol for me. And when I realized that I didn't have control over that is when I knew that enough was enough. I stopped drinking the day after my 23rd birthday because my hangover was so bad. I was throwing up between my own legs while like sitting on the toilet. And that was a humbling experience. Like I had thrown up a lot in my day, but it was the tandem shissing and vomiting for me that really sealed the deal. And at that point when I decided it was enough, I had some memory of like 12 step programs from like my adolescence and going to programs like Alateen and Al-Anon. So I went to a couple of meetings and just like decided it wasn't for me and that it didn't work for me. And then I never picked up drinking again, but I did start like popping pills and like smoking weed and doing other shit, like just being a asshole and I did that for six years before I came to my final realization that I have an internal problem that I try to numb and ignore but I need to address it and when I finally was desperate enough and at my rock bottom of being completely hopeless was when I was ready to take certain steps to secure like my own serenity. And so enough is enough really when you decide it is. When you decide you've had enough, like are you desperate? Are you on your hands and knees? Are you begging the universe to help you? We get to choose how deep our rock bottom goes. So if you're struggling with it, you gotta just make the decision, I cannot do this. And the next step is I cannot do this on my own. I need help and then choose where you want help. There's a lot of places you can go for help nowadays. You can go to a, an in-person treatment. You can go to an out-person treatment. There's, I think, this program called the SMART program. There's 12-step programs. There's all these things. Um, for me, what really works is the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. And in those rooms, I found fellowship and love I'd never known and a home. So it really works for me, And uh, but it might not work for you. Everything works differently for other people, but that's what worked for me. And I knew enough was enough when I was done struggling. Like I was like, oh my fucking God, I can't do this another day. You know what I mean? I can't upset the people I love another fucking second. I can't be miserable and every single day and still be alive. What the can I do? Light bulb moment. Oh, that's right, I'll go back to AA. Yeah, but again, desperation's a big part. Get desperate, dude. Here's one I don't understand. Hot dogs or legs? I hell with hot dogs, dude. And I'm into calves. On legs. Someone's asked what my morning routine is. This is my morning routine.
If you could be any cryptid or mythical creature, what would you be? Excellent question, bro. I, does a vampire count? Is that a mythical creature? I'd be a vampire or an elf. I'd be an elf. I'd absolutely be an elf. If it's like the Lord of the Ring elves, sign me up. That's my dream. What's your favorite type of music and our favorite songs? Love ya. Um, what's my favorite type of music? Right now, I'm really feeling Taylor Swift. So that's my type of music. What's my favorite Taylor Swift song right now? Probably You're On Your Own Kid. That one speaks to me in a deeply profound way. That's one of my favorite songs right now. What's your favorite type of movie besides horror? I really love a, an early oddies absurd comedy or absurd rom-com. Time to go fishing, baby. Touch my bass, Rebecca. Touch my bass! Touch my fucking bass! I also really like a lot of Tina Fey and Amy Poehler movies. Sisters is a bop. What perfume is on you? You like that? <laughs> it's Risky by Jennifer Love Hewitt. You can only get it at Kohl's. I'm wearing Erection by Calvin Klein. Really love big, broad blockbuster comedies. Someone else asked, how do you begin writing a script? I wanna start writing books. Is it the same process? I don't think it's the same process. I've never written a book, but I think it's a lot harder. It's such a long story and you have to tell all these different parts of it that like I have friends who have like Google Docs and spreadsheets for the books that they write and I don't think that could ever be me. Um, Cause I'm impatient and I think visually, like I like to, s I write in what I see and hear. And I feel like books, you can have thoughts put into it as well, which is kind of different. And I feel like my attention span would just lead me down a deep, dark rabbit hole of no return with no conclusion. So how do I start writing a script? Usually when I start writing a script, it starts with an idea or, a, or like a character or a concept and something I wanna say. Um, and if it's something I wanna say, then I plug in an idea and a concept that facilitates what I wanna say. And when I say something I wanna say, I wanna, it's like a message, like, uh, like um, a message about something I'm going through in a way that I want to relate to other people. Um, and then I sit down and I sort of craft out the bare bones beginning, middle, and end of what the story is that says what I, it is that I wanna say. And um, then I plug in characters and each one of those characters has an arc and each one of them facilitates the story and the message. And usually it's the main character's journey that leads us to the conclusion and the conclusion is what it is that I'm trying to say. Does that all make sense? Is that kind of boring? I also use spreadsheets. I'll do like a beat sheet on a spreadsheet, like introduce your main character. Uh, this is the world we live in. Uh, this is the uh, introduction of what the problem is for the character. This is the introduction of the problem for the story. And then I, it's like a three column process and in the second columns I fill in a little bit more information. So I go from vague to what it is I need to say to how I'm gonna show it. Welcome to Lizzie's Masterclass. Is this a fun hangout? I don't know. I don't know if it's fun or not. You guys asked though, so I'm gonna tell you. Ryland Adams asked, where are you at? On my couch, bitch, where am I ever at? Can we be friends? Dude, of course, we're friends. We're chilling, we're chatting, we are friends. Favorite Christina Aguilera song? I'm gonna be real basic and be like, dirty. Yes, Christina, yes. How is Bubs? Bubs is great. He's sleeping over there right now. If I could get my hands on him, I would. If I could drag his bones over to my lap right now, I absolutely would. But Icky's the one who's close to mommy, so I could grab him and I could make him cuddy and give him kisses and love him because he's so seepy. Oh, goodness. He's so seepy. You gotta go to bed. You gotta go to bed. What's your favorite beverage? I'm a large Diet Coke type of bitch. Fountain drinks the best. I feel like everybody knows that. Can make a dessert. Can I make a dessert? I think I've proven I cannot. 
Uh, I cannot, unless it's pre-boxed. Like I can make a box cake for sure these, but I'm probably gonna use olive oil in it so it's gonna taste a little off. What are your current goals, personal, professional, etc.? My current goals, professional, I want to finish, there are two scripts I need to finish right, well, that's a lie. There are three scripts I'd like to finish before the end of the second quarter. We are currently at the end of the first quarter and I would like to have three shareable drafts done by the second quarter. And that is ambitious. Let me tell you why. I am pushing it really hard because I would like to conceive a child and I'm terrified about conceiving a child and not being able to continue writing. So I would like to get some things done now so that I can be uh, present for my pregnancy if I should be so lucky to achieve said status. Um, and that is my personal goal. Another personal goal is to <sighs> slow down and make every day very full. I think I've adapted this tendency to like allow my exhaustion or ambition to remove me from a, a present day moment and that kind of bugs me because the world is so beautiful that I want to experience it. Not in any sort of deep, profound way, but just like, you know, walking fucking dogs every day and being around the people I love every day and just existing in the things that I am grateful for without neglecting them for, you know, financial insecurity or emotional insecurity. Like I wanna just banish all of that away and focus on getting to do something I love every day. And yeah, so just sort of, I guess, finding peace and serenity in the now is a personal goal as well. Are you scared or excited to have a baby? I think both, I'm terrified. I'm terrified. It is a life-changing decision, but I also think it's gonna be really fun. And I have um, fantasy moments where I can see myself and my husband with our kid and like really fulfilled by it, like laughing and thinking it's so funny. Um, I also feel like I'm really good at disassociating. So the scary parts of it, I think I can disassociate through and make it to the other side, which is kind of sick and fucked up and I should probably see a therapist. But I often laugh about the idea of labor because it's like, well, this is awful, but like what else are you gonna do? You know, like what are you gonna do? It's scary but I really want to invest in a baby. Like I want to spend time with this motherfucker. I feel like I already love them and I don't know who they are. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fun. What's my favorite food to eat? Sushi. More often than not, I'm like, let's go get some sush. I like sugar fish a lot. I don't get it very often because it's expensive and hard to acquire. Cause like you want to eat sugar fish in person. Like you want to eat it at the restaurant, but it's a lot, it's a lot to go do that. Am I still mad about the couch? You're goddamn fucking right I'm mad about the couch. That's so funny that you asked that. I thought about that this morning because I know Rylan's been working on his will and I'm like, if that mother doesn't leave me every couch in his possession at this point in time, I'm a fucking pissed. But I don't want to tell him that. I want him to just know to do that. And I don't think he knows to do that, which hurts even more. Do you believe in God and why? Yes, I do. And it's like an interesting thing and it's kind of stupid, but when I was in high school and they first started teaching us about all of our sort of microorganisms and the proteins in our bodies that tell our, that like are in charge of telling our cells how to like replicate and reproduce themselves. And like the fact that all of the chemicals that make up all of creation just sort of are seems like crazy to think that there would be no intelligent design behind that like it feels like really stupid to think that that could just happen on its own like what are the odds that all of these chemicals sort of come together to make consciousness it seems goofy to me i don't know that i think about it beyond that um and god for me is just a loving voice in my head that reminds me to be kind to myself and kind to others. I don't think it's anything else than that, but I really started identifying with this voice when I started working on myself and my program. And it just sort of is like, it sounds like a voice in my head that when I start having negative self 
thoughts or negative thoughts about other people or things or situations, it's a voice that says, get away from her, you bitch, which is Ellen Ripley in Aliens. And so for me, that's my God. That's how I see my God. But my God is nothing but all encompassing love and kindness and acceptance for everything as it is today. That's how I think about God. God doesn't give me things. God doesn't punish me. God does not reward me with anything beyond love. Um, God sees me through everything, the good and the bad with grace. And that is, that is my God. That's the God I believe in. And I use the word God only because it's a word that other people identify with, but I don't know that my God is the same God I see as responsible for all of creation. I just think that it's silly to think that all of these things, including consciousness and my animals and my body and all of these things could exist without some form of intelligent design. This is my skincare routine. Yeah, I don't have to hit record. No, you do have to hit record. Okay, we'll edit it. You, is it rolling? Yeah. Thank you for helping. Oh, I need more lights in here. Okay, so my skincare routine is I use Tatcha rice wash and I use just a tiny little smidgens. That much it goes a long way. Sort of foam it in my hands first. Also, this is all intuitive face care or skin care. You got something on the eye. Can't be eating mama's menstrual towels. Get out of here. Face. Usually my face is a little bit more damp than that, but I'm nervous because they have an audience. Dry. Don't rub on that. You block that. You understand? That's alpaca. That's $25,000 alpaca. You block that shit. Right. You don't rub on Put the club soda on there. Dab my face dry. Right, Jim? Mm -hmm. Am I doing good? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then right now I'm out of the face lotion I usually use, so I'm using Athena Daily Moisture. Just a little bit. I know this is gonna have some of the skincare girlies turning in their graves, but. Honestly, I feel like my bitch. I feel like my skin is the best when I'm using a Vino Daily Lotion. And James uses it. Did you know that? James uses it every day and he has some of the best skin I've ever seen. <sighs> then I like dry a little bit. And then I use the Tatcha Silk Sunscreen. My one qualm with this is the packaging of it. It's the dumb. I've ever seen and it leaks like a motherfucker, but I really like it. It's just a little bit of tinted sunscreen for us fair skin beauties. It's important to wear this even if you're not going outside because <laughs> the sun will get you. Even if you got the curtains drawn and you're sitting in darkness, you'll get a little burn. And that's my skincare routine. Hi Lizzie, how have you been? I'm okay. My question is, do you like making content in YouTube? I do. I like making content like this specifically because it holds me accountable. Um, it's like a weekly outlet where I like stop what I'm doing and I sit down and I kind of just touch base with everyone. It's a very consistent creative outlet and it's kind of fun, dude. Like, I don't know who else can say that they like pay their rent making dinner at their house and talking to a few strangers on the internet. Like it's pretty G. And not only that, but I don't know if you guys have noticed, but everybody that watches my vlogs is so unbelievably positive and supporting that, or supportive that it's like the best place to be on the internet. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, but you guys are fucking incredible. And sometimes when I'm feeling like sad or low or whatever i can just go to these comments section you're like a loser like my views are down or blah blah blah. it's like who gives a shit about the views because the people who are watching are like walking away with something amazing and that's fucking cool and i really have to thank you guys because 
my life has changed considerably for the better because of what we do here every Tuesday. And I am one of the luckiest creators out there to be a part of this community. So thank you so much. And remember to be in this present moment and to seek serenity and to be loving and kind to all of creation. And I will see you next Tuesday and every Tuesday after.